Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. We all have a journey in life. Whether you like it or not, right now, your journey may not be the greatest journey, but guess what? But that's the journey that God will use to do something incredible in your life. Maybe right now you're in a journey where you feel like I'm stuck. Well, guess what? God can use your stuck and make it your stepping stone. And so as we all have a journey in this life, we have to realize that God has a plan. You know what? Our whole thing today is hope. You know, we have these shirts that says hope is not lost and and we really believe that here at elevate church there have been so many hopeless situations that have walked in through these doors but god is a god who brings hope with future hey listen whoever's phone that is your phone keeps going off just turn it off there's like a little off button or maybe ask your neighbor next to you be like hey help me turn this off and they would be more than happy to help you because i'm telling you right now it ain't god texting you right now i promise you <laughs> And so as I started just thinking about our seven-year anniversary, I'm like, man, you know what? This has been a journey. And I'll tell you, in seven years, uh, the journey for us has not been always the greatest. You know, we've had some clear roads where it's been like, wow, man, we got some momentum. Man, things are happening. And then we've had some rough roads with potholes. And, and all of a sudden, you know what? We're on the road and we hit a pothole in life here at the church. And then we got a flat and we're like, boom, 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 boom. And we're just stuck and we're like, oh, my God. And we have moments where we've been on the journey where things were foggy. Things weren't really clear. You can barely see, you know, what one person ahead. Of, it was just so challenging. But in seven Seven years, I can tell you that God has been faithful and he continues to show up and he continues to show off and he continues to heal people, restore people, deliver people and give them all kinds of amazing stories that they can share with other people that bring more people. And that's why God just keeps blessing his church because you know what? Though our journey may be one filled with blessings and challenges, the bottom line is that it's the journey that God chose for Elevate Church, whether we like it or not. But there is a final destination. Hey, how many here are parents? Lift your hand if you're a parent. How many have been on a road trip and, and you had your little ones with you? And what is it the thing that they always say? What do kids, kids always say at the count of three? Ready? One, two, three, say it. Are we there yet? Are we there? Yet? Are we there? And I remember for like 10 years, um, my family and I, I would travel to Colorado for our vacation. And, you know, Alexis and Isaac were little. And, uh, and it never failed for 10 years straight. It was, are we there yet? Are we there yet? And I know that there's many parents like I was where we would lie to them. <laughs> right? I'd be like, yeah, just, you know, take a nap for like two hours. And when you wake up, we'll be there just to go ahead and knock them out, you know, and enjoy the rides and not hear in like every five minutes, are we there yet? Are we there yet? And we would say things like, yeah, you know what, just five more hours. And you know what? It's funny because when you tell the kids all the different lies that you make up as you're going, they don't even know what the heck five hours looks like. <laughs> they don't even know what five minutes looks like. They don't know what anything looks like because even though you give them an answer and even sometimes, you know what, you tell them the truth, they hey, actually, it's going to be like an 18-hour drive. You know what? And they're just like, oh, okay. But they don't even know what 18-hour drive looks like. And so along the way, they're so anxious and so impatient that they say, are we there yet? Are we there yet? I don't know about you, but some of us, I think we forget that we act like kids with God. And you're trying to get to your destination. You're trying to get to that career. You're trying to get that house. You're trying to see that marriage be restored. You're trying to see your kids, you know, get, get restored and redeemed and set free. And, and it's just like, man, is it going to happen yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? So we're no different than our children. Because when God gives a roadmap, he shows you where you are. For example, today in society, everybody uses maps. You know what? How do I know that? Well, if you're going to get to a destination you've never been before, someone needs to give you a map to, in order for you to get there. And I use apps. I love it. How many use, like, apps for maps and stuff like that? You know, one of my favorite ones is Waze. You know why? Because it tells me when the cops are ahead of me, right? <laughs> just, just keep it real. I'm still being delivered right now. I'm still being delivered. But that's always been a challenge for me, right? It's like, it's like heavy metal, right? Heavy foot on the metal. 
uh, pedal. And, uh, and so it's just like challenging. But, but I enjoy ways, not just because it tells you where the cops are. Okay, that's bad. Okay, so don't, don't do that. Don't speed. I'm, I'm, I'm under, you know, counseling right now in that area with God. <laughs> But, but I also love the fact that, you know what, ways will tell you about um, your future delays. It'll tell you when there's a car broke down on the side of the road. It'll tell you where traffic is going to get heavy. And it begins to communicate all these things that are ahead. Wouldn't it be awesome if God would just tell us everything about our future? Wouldn't that be really cool? And so what does it look like? Let's put the first picture up there. So, you know, it starts with this. Like this morning I said, you know what, let me go ahead and just put this as a little imagery. And so I said, let's get to Elevate Church. And so there I am from there. I'm the little blue dot. And the gray dot is New Hall Elevate Church. And it says it would take you nine minutes and you just take lines. But how many know this? Though we have a map. Our map, honestly, is the word of God. God gives us the map. He, gives us, he not only gives you the, the, the instructions and the guidance, but you know what? He paints a picture of the possibility of the hazards that are ahead of us. He'll even tell you that, hey, there's going to be seasons where you're going to be delayed. There's going to be seasons where things may feel like they're not working. There's going to be seasons where there's going to be mourning. There's going to be pain. But there's also going to be seasons of great breakthroughs, great victories. There's going to be seasons of great healings. There's going to be seasons of great miracles and so the bottom line is this is that when when you accept the fact that God has placed your life in a journey that you're already living you can try to reroute that supper sucker but guess what show me picture number three I think it's picture number three yeah no that was the right one or is that two number two look at that one. here's what I, I have done things like this and and I'm sure many of you have here I put in the address it gives me a destination. It gives me a map of how to get there. But me, Mauricio, I'm impulsive. Like the moment I start seeing traffic, I have a shortcut. <laughs> and then I start getting, I'm like, oh, no, I know. I know there's a, and I get off and I exit off the freeway. And I start taking back roads and streets. How many do that? You just think you have a better way. Listen, the maps don't lie, guys. <laughs> I've learned that already. The maps don't lie. God doesn't lie when he says, I have a future with hope. As a matter of fact, Jeremiah 29, 11, he says, hey, listen, the plans that I have for you, man, they're plans to prosper you. They're plans to, to give you a future with hope. And so many times I have done this, and I hate that map. That's the one I really hate when I see that because I've done, I've done so many reroutes. I, I just came back from Texas in, in our pastoral's annual get-together, and I'm riding, and I act like I know Texas. <laughs> and so I'm riding. I'm like, no, I know. I remember this. This is a shorter way. And I hate, see, I hate when that pops up because I'm like, oh. And in Texas, let me tell you, when you drive in Texas, they don't have many roads. So once you're stuck in traffic, it's not like, oh, let me go around this way, this way, and then I'll... No, you're stuck in traffic. And I hate that because that is telling me, Mauricio, you're going to have to wait now to the next entrance of the freeway. Bust through you and go back to the same route that you originally were giving by maps or by ways. And that's what happens with us. We need to stop taking shortcuts because shortcuts will cause delays. We need to stop taking shortcuts because when you take shortcuts, you can find yourself in the wrong way. We need to stop taking shortcuts because if you keep taking shortcuts, you're going to realize that it's only going to take you longer to get to the place that God wants you to be. Are you hearing me? So many of us, we're always trying to find a shortcut, how to make money fast. There's no, it doesn't exist. Always trying to find a shortcut. You know, trying to obtain something or someone, taking shortcuts doesn't work that way. When you take shortcuts, I have found that I am always rerouting and having to go back to the same road. Here, here's the truth. The, Paul said it this way. He says, you're all in a race. And we all have a finish line. Please know that the finish line is never going to change. You can change lanes all you want, but guess what? You're going to have to get back in your lane because the finish line remains. And that's a promise of God. Aren't you glad that he's not all wavering and everything? Listen, when, you swear, when, when, when you're not serving God, you're swerving with God. <laughs> but when you're with God, man, he has you on the path that he has chosen for you, and it's something amazing and awesome. 
And so I get it. I get it. We're all, we're all on this journey, and, and things happen in life, and, 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 and I get it, man. We're always trying to do something to, 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 to get to our location a lot quicker, a lot faster, because we all think we know how to do things. And we even, I've done stupid things like this, like I'll find new map apps, and I'm like, oh, man, I'm going to try this new app map because maybe they have a better way. Let me tell you something. They all say the same thing. <laughs> we're just trying to get there faster. You know, and, and, and you know, I remember this too. I was going to Palm Springs for a, a conference that our worship team opened up for, and um, I was driving. And, and of course, I'm 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 under therapy for speeding, right? I'm relaxed. I'm learning, and and I'm dealing with this, right? So I'm like, on Palm Springs, I started driving very slow, just like just restful, enjoying the drive, not going cray cray, and just just like hey, and and you know, and just enjoy. And I see this dude from the my my rearview mirror, he's zoom, 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 and I'm like, dang, I remember that's me right there, you know, that's the old me. <laughs> and 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 he's like, Shh, and I'm seeing it, and he's coming, and I see him, he's like, Shroom, and he's like, uh, but I'm here, I'm seeing him break, you know, squeak his brakes and and maneuver, and and you know, and I'm just, and then he was just gone, and I'm just like, man. Just looking at him, I got stressed out, you know. And so I'm driving, relaxed, got my Jesus culture on and my elevation worship and just, you know, praise God. Kumbaya, my Lord. Kumbaya. And, and just, just driving. And you know what's funny? As I'm driving, I look over to the side and the guy is right. I caught up to the guy. <laughs> Same road. <laughs> Going to the same destination, probably. He was probably a Christian going to the same conference. I don't know. (laughs) And what's funny is you can speed all you want, but tell me how that's working for you. So you could either arrive stressed, frustrated, angry, anxious, or you could just rest in God that regardless of how long it's going to take you, you will make your final destination. The difference between that guy and me is that when he got to his destination, he was stressed. When I got to my destination, I was full of peace and blessed and had rest and wasn't funky, weird. Because you know what? You start riding these roads nowadays, you know, they're all like demon roads. Got the 405 demon, the 101 demon. <laughs> you know which is the worst demon? Is it's, it's the transition between the 5 and the 14 demon. That sucker. Oh, y'all know that. Come on, let me see all my. Yeah, oh, I. Help me, Jesus. And you know what? To this day, I still find a shortcut to get out of it. And I still end up at the same time Maps told me I was going to arrive. It's so funny. It's just so weird. Sometimes even later than that. And so, so, so here's the truth. You know what? You're in a journey right now. What if you started taking your life serious and started realizing that you're not just trying to drive to work. You're not just trying to drive to family. You're not just trying to drive to church. But your life is going somewhere. And... And how you, how you conduct that life, how you carry that life, how you, how you acknowledge God that he has the, the right map for you, that he has the right directions for you, that he has the God satellite in you. You know what the satellite in you is? It's the Holy Spirit who lives in you. When you receive Jesus Christ, you receive the Spirit of God himself lives in you, and he knows where you are, and he knows where you need to get to. The question is, is will you, will you take his route that was created by design or will you take your route which was created by you by default? Because there's too many default Christians and not many designed. God is the greatest designer, guys. Amen. And you can take shortcuts. <laughs> you can speed. You can do all kinds of things on the road, but at the end of the day, man, the road trip with God in your life, he's not going to change. And I get it. It gets challenging in life. It gets difficult. It gets stressful. Starting this church was so pain. It hurt. But let me tell you something. But this was the track. This was the road that God chose. And seven years later, we keep seeing lives changed and touched by God why why because we keep the same road that he gave us if you stay faithful to God God will be faithful to you let me read you a scripture real quick are you guys getting this 
Yeah. And trust me, there's always a shorter route, but not necessarily. Okay, I'm going to ask that person again, please. If that's your phone, turn it off. Turn it off, please. I promise you, it's not Jesus. That's the devil. <laughs> if it was your mom, <laughs> forgive me. <laughs> <clears throat> I take wrong exits sometimes. <laughs> that was probably one. <laughs> Let me show you this real quick. Exodus chapter 13. And your phone, it's someone over here. So turn it off, please. Because if it happens one more time, I'll pick it up. Exodus 13. And I say that in love. <laughs> Exodus 13, verse 17 through 18. It says this. This is pretty crazy because, you know, this was the ultimate road trip. It was the most ultimate road trip that, uh, that the Israelites would take. But it wasn't just any trip. Listen, the Israelites were in bondage for 400 years. They were slaves to the Egyptians. They were bound by stuff. I don't know um, what, what you're going through, but right now there may be some people here that you're bound with something. You've been, you've been a slave to something. You, you've, been, you've been stuck. For 400 years, they're stuck. There's no movement there's no victory. There's no blessings. They have been in bondage. I, 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 you, I have to ask myself, okay, what, what, what am I going through where, where maybe, maybe I'm stuck. Maybe there's no progression. Maybe there's no movement because there's something that I have not addressed in my life yet. Maybe I'm on the side of the road when I should be on the road to Damascus where God wants me. The road to blessing. The road to victory. And so here, the the the... The, the Pharaoh of Egypt is, is enslaving them. And, and now, you know what? The, the people of Israel have been praying to God and praying and praying. They're praying for a God map for their life. They're praying for a future with hope. And then God finally answers. And there was a man by the name of Moses. We'll just call him Mosey for short. He shows up and he starts telling Pharaoh, let my people go. And, and it's pretty amazing because now Moses and God, man, God downloads an app of a map to Mosey and he tells him this is where we're going to go but his map was not like the map that Moses thought it was going to be so many times we come to God and and God's challenging us and he's stirring our spirit and the moment it doesn't go the way you want it to go you 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 debunk you default or you reroute and God's saying hey listen I want you to learn how to trust me and so look at this in Exodus chapter 13 verse 17 look at this he says and when Pharaoh let the people go and I believe that God is letting some people go today into destiny. And he says, and when Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them on the road through the Philistine country. So that means that there was two routes. Though, that was shorter. Have you ever thought, God, why can't you just like, oh, just do it now? Because you know what? If he did it shorter, you probably wouldn't have a, a thanks, thankfulness spirit. You probably, wouldn't, you probably would never even give God the glory anyways. And so he says, that would be shorter. For God said, if they face war, man, they might change their minds and go back to Egypt. So right now, whatever it is that you're experiencing in life, it's not that God doesn't like you. It's not that God has forgotten you. It's not that God has forsaken you. It's just that God needs to take you through a longer route because there's some character. There's some things that he needs to remove off your life. There's some things that he needs to add to your life. There's some things that he needs to speak into your life. And if you took the short route, you probably will never come to the destination he wants. So right now, whatever it is that you and I are facing, and trust me, yeah, though... Uh, we're pastoring this church, and yeah, you see, you know, people are coming and everything, but we face challenges every single week. But God will take your challenge, and he'll use it as a stepping stone for something great. And so look at this. And, it, you know, God's like, man, if I go short, they're going to change their minds. So right now, the only reason that you're going through what you're going through, it's not that God threw that in your life. Because some of us are dealing with sickness, disease. You know, some things that you didn't create, things that just were thrown at you, things that the devil, Satan himself, is trying to destroy you. But God will take that stuff and he'll reroute him. And, man, he'll do something amazing in your life. And you got to know that. And so he says, so God led the people around. Everybody say around. <laughs> he took them the longer way. The desert rode toward the Red Sea. And the Israelites went up out of Egypt ready for battle. You see? God had to take them a longer way because they were so accustomed 
to being destructive and to being complaining that he said, I'm going to have to take him a longer route because I'm going to build courage. I'm going to build bravery. I'm going to build some endurance. I'm going to build some things inside of them that's going to help them face the enemy that's coming up very soon. And so now they, they have, they have the, the confidence or the Godfidence to, 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 to go ahead and face the enemy. God is trying to build your faith so that you can face your mountains. Please listen to me because if not, you'll just have religious ear and be like, oh, amen. But when the moment you face that mountain, it's, it really shows who you are. It reveals the real man or woman you are. Don't despise your route. Your route has a purpose. Your pain has a purpose. Your, your delay has a purpose. Just because you're delayed right now and whatever it is you're believing God for doesn't mean that God has denied you. You just have to learn to realize that, wait a minute, though right now I feel like, man, I am stuck like the Israelites. God directed them through the wilderness. In the wilderness, there must be nothing good in the wilderness. Who wants to walk through the wilderness? Man, I want to walk through trees and brooks and rivers and waterfalls. That's the route I want to take. I want to take the scenic route. God said, no, I'm going to take you through desert. And on top of that, then you have to come towards the Red Sea. It's like, what do you mean the Red Sea? How are we going to get across? We don't got no boats. And so many times we're trying to calculate what we need when God will provide the need when the time comes. And so look, and so after leaving uh, Sukkoth, they camped. Everybody say they camped. they camped. And that's the problem with Christians. They camp a lot. <laughs> At Etham and, and on the edge. Listen, right now you're either on the edge or you're on the edge of a breakthrough. Mm -hmm. And he says, of the desert and by day, look at this, by day the Lord, he went where? He went ahead. He went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud to guide them. Come on, is he, is he, is he the directions? Yes, he is. To guide them on their way. And by night he became a pillar of fire to give them light so that they could travel. Come on, everybody say Travel. Come on, God's all about journey, man. You're right now, your life is a journey. So he says, and so he gave them light so that they can travel by day or night. And neither the pillar of cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night left its place in front of the people. It never left its place. So often Christians leave their place, but God never leaves his place. What happens? Here's what happens. You know what? Sometimes as, as, a, as a Christian or even just as a person, you can camp in the, in the campsite of mourning. Let me tell you something. I know what mourning is like. I have, I've, I've had some, some terrible things happen, one of them being my niece being killed. That hurt. That was mourning. And so there's a season for mourning. There's a season in your life where you're going to have fear and just literally just grip you. There's going to be seasons in your life where you're going to feel like doubt is just overwhelming you. There's going to be seasons in your life where financially you're going to be struggling. There's going to be seasons in your life where, man, your family is wacky whack, cray cray. There's going to be seasons where marriage is not going to be the greatest. There's going to be all kinds of seasons in your life. Just because you're a Christian doesn't mean that everything is going to go peachy king. Just because you're a follower of Jesus Christ, it doesn't mean that everything is just going to be just perfect. I'm telling you, it's not. And I've been serving Jesus for 20 years, and it has not been perfect. I pray for just an awesome week with no bad news. There's not a week I don't hear bad news, but there's not a week that I don't hear about someone's healing or breakthrough. And so I get it. There's a season where you're going to camp in a place of fear, mourning. But check this out. Mourning is something that God allows us to do. But at some point, you got to go from mourning to mourning. There's joy in the morning. At some point, joy has to come back. And that is a choice. You see, the people decided to camp there. You know why? 
Because they rather camp in fear. They rather camp in mourning, camp in whining, camp in complaining, camp in whatever. Nobody loves me. Nobody cares about me. Just camp there and you camp. Listen, the last time I checked, God is your provider, not man. He's been the provider since in the beginning. And so, check this out. So, morning came, and they thought, yeah, well, God will just wait on me. <laughs> Not. In the morning, the cloud, the pillar of cloud that, that gave them shade from the heat and the sun, that, 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 that literally protected even their clothing. Their clothing didn't fall apart. God provides in every season. So, once that cloud started moving, Man, that, that was the message to the people. You better pack your little stuff up. Put your little tent away, man. Put your little, you know, sleeping bag away. Come on, pack it up. We are moving. Because that cloud ain't waiting. Why? Because God, listen, God already knew, knew that man is always going to delay. So he said, let me provide to, for them. Let me show them my grace, my love, my compassion, and maybe that will compel them to follow me. That's why Jesus sat on the cross. He was willing to give his life for you and me in the midst of all of our sin, our mess, our destructive ways to show us and display his love to us on a cross so that that would hopefully compel us to follow Jesus. And so the cloud moved. And when that cloud moved, man, you better be following that cloud. Some of us are still in the wilderness, not because, oh, God is making me go through the wilderness. No, it's just you camp there. You live there. And God's saying, hey, listen, we're on a journey. And I'm trying to get you to your promised land. I'm trying to get you to your final destination. I get it. Our, 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 our destination on earth right now, we're all trying to, you know, we want our careers. We want our house. We want our cars. We want, those are great. Awesome. Do that. But let me tell you something. Right now, this life that you're living is preparing you for the eternal life that you'll live forever and ever and ever. And that is with Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way. Come on, that sounds like instructions and directions to me. He said, I am the way, the truth. Come on, that, he's like, I don't lie. My map is for real.com, right? I'm the way, road. I am the truth. Come on, his instructions don't lie. And he says, and I am the life. He is life. When you're lacking, he provides life. When you are sad, he provides joy. When you are stressed, he provides peace. When you are doubting, he provides truth. The Lord will provide in every season of life. The question is, will you stop camping and will you start moving with the cloud that he provided? Are you listening today? All of you have a destination. How much longer will you just camp? We can't camp, guys. And I get it. When people come to this church, they're like, oh, I came to this church because it's small and intimate. I'm like, well, don't get comfortable, man, because it's not going to stay small forever. Yeah, we just, we like smaller churches. Well, we'll see how long you enjoy this church then. I come from a mega church, so I know how it is to be big in the thousands, but we can still be family in the hundreds. It's a matter of how you do life. How long? How long will you camp there? Come on, God is trying to move you. God is trying to take you from, from mourning, mourning, pain, mourning, to joy in the morning. The timing of God, look at these points on the screen. The timing of God for the destination of your life is never, there's three Ds. It's never delayed. God doesn't delay. You know what, right now, your delay that you're probably so upset about, it's probably God just trying to protect you from something that's going to harm you. Yeah, he's probably just like protecting you because if he lets you just go, you, you'll jack it all up. So there's a difference between delayed and denied. So right now, if you're not where you want to be, are we there yet? No. It's just, it's, it's, it's not denied. So, so, so when, when God, he doesn't, he doesn't delay, he moves on his time. His time. Number, number two, it's he doesn't deny. 
And number three, it's he doesn't deviate. Aren't you glad that God is not, you know, dysfunctional? <laughs> that when he says that he's going to get us somewhere, he will get you there? And, and that's where we have to learn. Now, what do I do, Pastor? Because this is where I'm at in my life. I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm just stuck. And, and I'm just like, ah, you know, I'm going to church and I'm seeking God. Or, or maybe you're here for the first time and you're just like, I'm not a churchy person. Well, that's awesome. Neither am I. I'm a Jesus person. And, and, so, and so I'm telling you that, that there is, a, there is a, an ingredient in order for you and I to move forward. And, and look at this, same story. They're coming out of Egypt. Same story, Exodus 14, verse 10 through 16, last verse, and we're out of here. We're going to go have some cake and some drinks and have fun and, and, uh, and enjoy a seven-year anniversary. It says this, as Pharaoh approached. So now the Israelites are out on their way. They're outgoing. They're free, and they're excited and everything. Yay! But the enemy's coming, and Pharaoh he approached, the Israelites looked up, and they're like, oh, my God. And so many of us, listen, when you're moving forward, the enemy always wants to come and talk to you about your past. While Satan talks to you about your past, God talks to you about your future. Jesus is not concerned about your past. He's concerned about where you're going. He's not concerned about where you've been. He's not even concerned where you were last night. Some of us were in the club, clubbing it, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, yeah, right? Barely made it to church today, right? Some of us had a hangover. Right now, your head is hurting hearing me speak. But you made it here. Praise God. Can we give the Lord a hand clap that you made it here today? Come on, you made it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Praise Jesus. Some of us got ticked off, flipped some people off before we got here. Got angry. And then you realize that the person you flipped off was going to elevate church too. And you told your wife, honey, hold on, well, let's just wait for a little bit, you know. <laughs> Listen, it doesn't matter how you got here, but God got you here. Amen. And for that, you got to rejoice. Amen. It doesn't matter. What matters is that I'm here right now, in this place, in this season, in this hour, I am here. Even if your place, your, 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 your circumstance right now may be the most difficult one. Let me tell you, those watching online, at the same time, you're probably in a hospital bed. Guess what? But you're still here. What do you mean I'm still here? You're alive. It ain't over until it's over. We don't quit. We fight the good fight of faith. We don't stop. We don't, we, don't, we don't whine anymore. Look at this. And so he was approaching. They looked up. And they, there they were, the Egyptians, marching after them. And they were terrified. And they cried out to the Lord. And they said to Moses, what, it, uh, what is it? What is it? Because, of, because of, there was no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die. What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? <laughs> Didn't we say... To you in Egypt, just leave us alone, man. Some of you got invited today by someone, and you just kept telling them, leave me alone, man. But they got you here. Why? Because God wants to do something in you. He said, look, 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 how, look how they started going back to their thinking. Man, why can't we just go serve the Egyptians again? Why can't we just go be slaves again? Come on, your, your life is either designed, created by design, or you're defaulting back again. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. And Moses answered the people. Look at this. I love this because you know what? Moses, he was just talking faith, man. He didn't even believe what he was saying. But I love it. At least he was saying something positive. I'll prove it to you. Moses answered to the people, do not be afraid. He was all trying to be a hero and everything. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance of the Lord that he will bring you today. And the Egyptians you see today will never see again. And man, he turned around and started crying. I just told them, I lied to them. Are we there yet? He straight up was, he, he was lying. That's what I love about realness with God. Stop trying to be so perfect because it don't look on you. It doesn't look good on you. We got to be real with God. And look. 
I'll, I'll prove to you he was lying. You guys can even read it with me on my notes. Look. Do not be afraid. Stand firm. Blah, blah, blah. Right? Verse 14. And the Lord will fight for you. And you, all you need to do is to be still. Yay. Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying, dude? He told Moses, why are you crying? What is wrong with you, loco? <laughs> why are, see, look, 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 no, look. Why are you crying? Why are you crying? Look at your neighbor and say, why are you crying? Why are you crying? Why? Why? why, why? Is that, I mean, that, God, God was straight up. Why are you crying? Wipe your boogers. Come on. What, 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 are, you, what are you doing, bro? I, I called you. And with that calling, I gave you confidence. What's wrong with you? Let them cry. You don't cry. There's a time to mourn. And there's a time for mourning. Joy comes early in the morning. Amen. And so, and so, he says, why are you crying? Tell the Israelites to what? Tell the Israelites to what? Move on. Stop camping and move on. Stop whining and move on. If you're mourning, there's a season for that. But at some point, move on. But you don't know what they did to me. I don't need to know what they did to you. People have done things to me too. But guess what? I have to do what? But pastor, you don't know. Man, the life I lived and all the stuff that I had when I was five years old. What do you have to do at some point? And, and why is it that we as Christians, we get so weird about that. Like, that's so harsh. No, it's not. The only reason God wants you to move on is because he's trying to get you to healing. But he can't heal you if you're still stuck with yesterday. But you don't know. No, the only reason you can't move on is because you won't let go. When Moses showed up to Pharaoh, he said, let my people go. <sighs> How do you move on? They're stuck. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Let's go. How do you move on? What do I do? Well, we know that when Moses was there with the people, man, he had, he had this confidence, and then he got scared, a season of fear, and then God says, stop crying, and he's telling the people to move on, and then he goes on to say this. He says, Moses, raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. So what is he saying? He's saying this, when you are stuck, when your faith is stuck, when your life is stuck, he's saying you got to raise your staff. Raise your staff. You see, right now, you may not have what you need, but you have faith. He's saying, elevate your faith. Come on, elevate your trust. Elevate your family. Elevate your children. Whatever God has placed in your life, you got to elevate it. But then he says, and he says, and stretch out your hands. Put the verse up, please, guys. He says, stretch out your hands. Stretch out your hands. So I work with one and I worship with the other. You don't, just, you don't just do nothing. He says, elevate your staff. And look, and raise your staff and stretch it out of your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the Red Sea on dry ground. What am I going to do, Pastor? What do I got to do? Listen, many of you came to church today. You have to keep doing what you did today. You got to keep elevating your faith. How do I elevate my faith? I got to elevate my relationship with God. I got to elevate my word time. I got to elevate my prayer time. I got to elevate. I just got to trust. I got to be like crazy, crazy Mosey, right? Man, he's telling the people, they're saying, are we there yet? Are we there yet? He's like, yeah, yeah, we're good, man. Y'all going to be delivered. It's going to be up. And he's crying like scared. But God said, what? What, what, what are you doing? Dude, what's in your hand? A stick. No, it's a staff. Lift it up. And when he stretched out his hand, listen, what do you do when you're stuck? You start worshiping God again because he's the only one that can part the ways. The only one. You're trying to make it happen. Only God can make it happen. Lift your hand to heaven and say, Father, I raise my staff as I put my trust in you. Divide the waters, God. Remove those things. In those places in my life that are keeping me from moving forward. 
from getting to the other side. I lift up my faith. This will not just be a Sunday today thing. This will be an everyday life thing. I choose your roadmap. Holy Spirit, lead me, guide me, direct me. I thank you, Jesus, that my desire is to lift up my staff and see your miracle working power work in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. So the next time you're in a challenge, lift up your staff. Just lift up a hand. Just be like, Father, I praise you. And watch. He'll open the doors. You have power in these hands. Power. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.